Okay, so what we're going to do is let's have a look at how we're going to test this paint. Let's have a look at the test pieces we're going to use, and more importantly, the decision and the decision making is how we're going to prepare these pieces. So uh, basically, if I have to look around these cameras, it's to make sure everything is actually going, going onto the screen. So um, how we're going to test um, all of these different paints, uh, all of these uh, different paints here, um, is we've gone ahead and got some 32,000 2024 T3 aircraft grade aluminium or aluminium. It's probably going to be a little confusing for everyone involved. Um, and uh, this is owl-clad material as well. We can see it's quite shiny. Um, all of the maker's marks are um, still on here. It's 2024 T3 aircraft-grade aluminum um, and 32 thou thick. So uh, I've gone ahead and um, got a whole bunch of these uh, little uh, six-inch pieces, um, uh, about two inches across, and uh, we've gone and got a lot of these. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, take several of these, um, several of these pieces, there'll be two pieces per paint, um, per type of paint, as um, we're going to have uh, one side, which is going to be completely clean, one side is going to be completely clean, uh, what I mean by that is we're just going to spray the spray paint um, directly onto it, we're not going to damage it. We're also going to have one side where we're going to have two types of damage, we're going to have a gouge, um, so it goes through the paint down into the uh, material, so we can see shiny metal, and then um, another type of damage we're going to have is uh, we're going to go ahead and take a scouring pad, a scotch bright here, and go ahead and just scuff up a little bit of the paint um, after it's painted and the paint is all cured. So that way we can see if any of the paints actually, um, uh, any of the primers, the edge primers actually will provide a little bit better protection than others um, in the salt test uh, that we're going to do. So... Um, uh, also, also the other thing we're going to do, I'll show you one, uh, the, the whole process here, um, is I'm going to leave a little section on all of the pieces down the bottom that's going to be completely blank with no paint or anything like that on it. Um, that little bottom on the section there is going to be able to compare each individual piece um, if there are any variations of the heat that the pieces get or the amount of water, things like that. We're going to be able to account for that and say, oh, look, there's a bare piece there and we can directly compare painted to non-painted if there's any um, benefit to the paint whatsoever and then we can compare all of the individual slides um, together. Now why are there two? Why, why do we have two slides? Well one of these slides is a, another very popular um, uh, process is using Corrosion X or ACF 50. I have decided that we're going to use ACF 50 as our um, baseline. Um, the main reason for ACF 50 is um, this stuff here is uh, ACF 50 is far less toxic compared to um, uh, Corrosion X. Um, we'll go ahead and have a talk about the MSDS at some point here. But uh, the ACF 50, and it's Canadian made, right? Got to represent um, the, the Corrosion X stuff. It's got a little bit more um, uh, materials in it that are a little bit more hazardous to deal with. ACF 50, you can go bathe in this and uh, you'd be fine unless you have really sensitive skin. You can go ahead and have a bath in the stuff. Corrosion X, eh, not so much. You want to take a little bit of um, skin protection, um, uh, stuff like that. So um, why we have two sheets is one of these is going to um, just be with the etch primer. That's going to be it. And one of these sheets, after we do the damage on it, um, is going to be covered uh, with ACF 50. Now, um, it's only going to get one coat, but uh, it'll get coated on both sides. So then we'll be able to compare an individual primer on two different slides, an individual um, primer on two different slides in, in, what's the word? In conjunction with using um, uh, ACF50, um, which is just uh, any corrosion um, uh, spray, right? It's just an anti-corrosion spray that can be put on on bare um, aluminium or it can be put on um, prime stuff and it's usually only on the inside of the aircraft. You know, they get a big spray thing, they fill it all the inside of your wings and fuselage, it leaves like a little bit of a residue on the surface. This is the stuff that we're going to use for that. So we're going to be able to see then, um, you know, is what does one primer stand out above all of the others? And, well, does one still stand out above the others if you're going to use it in conjunction with some other kind of corrosion preventative spray? That's the idea anyway. I'm just making sure we're still recording. And on top of all of that, um, I'm going to go ahead and take two slides. 
um, two slides here that are going to be completely unprepared. Um, so these are just going to be bare 2024 T3, and we're going to go ahead and cover a couple of slides just with ACF 50, um, and these two slides um, will uh, be able to be used um, as hey, maybe you don't want to prime. Maybe you say, hey, priming is still too much of a process. Um, what happens if I just spray this stuff on? And of course, um, we'll go ahead and just have two slides where we do absolutely nothing to, um, other than just remove the, um, the bluing off it and uh, see what happens there. So uh, we'll, we'll have um, quite a few um, double blind. Is that double blind? I don't, whatever. It's going to have um, a couple of uh, sheets where um, you know we're going to be able to compare results from painted sheets to non-painted sheets to correct. You know, we're going to get a full a full look at the thing here. So um, why don't I go ahead here and uh, let's talk about preparation for priming. Uh, what is it? Five P's. Prior preparation prevents piss poor paint. I believe is what it's called. Um, I think that's the saying. So uh, what we want to do here is um, prepare our material. Now this will be um, very, this will uh, uh, light the forums on fire, um, as uh, this is purely an opinion, um, but uh, with everything that we've talked about already, um, the idea with how these slides are going to be maintained, or preparing our parts for an aircraft. Let's, let's pretend these are actually going on an aircraft, our RV-10, we've got plans of here. We're building an RV-10 and we want to prepare all these bits and pieces, um, and uh, I, I would like to prime them. So as we've, we've discussed already the, um, the logic behind that, I want the same with the um, preparation of components. Is Sure, there's, um, there's pre-coat available, there's a Lumi prep, there's uh, all these other types of preparation that is available um, uh, where a lot of people will do um, water tests, you know, they'll clean with soapy water and then go to um, a Lumi prep and uh, um, they'll scrub with a Lumi prep, wipe down with a Lumi prep then go back to water, do a water breaking test, and oh my god, I am bored already. Um, I'm here to build an aeroplane, and maybe you are here to build an aeroplane as well. Um, I just want to be able to take the simplest process that's going to work, that's not going to damage my material, and is going to give me a good surface finish. Um, so why don't we just do what you would do if you were out on the road, if you had an aeroplane that needed a structural repair, um, what would an engineer do? Well, um, from my experience as um, dealing with uh, repairs and things like that, is um, simple is best, and uh, it's what works. What is that? What will I need? How are we going to prepare these pieces of material? Very good question. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take a Scotch-Brite pad, this is all of the components. Consider this your list. A Scotch-Brite pad, hopefully a full one. You can see here's one that I've torn apart earlier. A Scotch-Brite pad, um, the brown variety. Uh, we will also need whatever our material is, of course. Uh, we will need some just shop rags. These are just disposable shop rags. So we'll uh, put that up there, some disposable shop rags. Um, some Scotch-Brite. And then what we're going to use as our surface preparation treatment is, yes, just some acetone. You can't see that. We are just going to use acetone. Uh, very, very simple stuff. Um, it's also very cheap. You know, when we start adding in components like pre-coat and things like that, things start getting expensive. I can go up to my local, um, my local store and pick myself up a tin of acetone for $10. Like, and this is going to be enough for the entire aeroplane. Um, it is simpler, it's a simple process, and if I ever run out, I only need to go up to the store. So what I'm trying to do here is do a, 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 a we don't want to double handle the material, we don't want to over prepare, you know, there's such a thing as over preparing. Um, consider this, that you know, Cessna still will push aircraft out of the factory with just aluminium like this. They won't coat them. Well, at least they did that in the older aircraft. Maybe, they're, maybe they've changed. I don't know. I haven't seen a brand new build um, 172. But uh, consider old Pipers and things like that that are, wow, some of them 40, 40 years old now. Um, you look inside the wings and you're just seeing um, bare shiny um, aluminium. Well, uh, sure, you, you know, if your aircraft turns into a submarine and starts going swimming in some salt water, you're going to have a bad time. But uh, most of us don't like turning our aeroplane into a submarine. So um, 
some preparation treatment, like we're priming here, is obviously better than zero, or is it? I don't know. We're going to find out anyway. Um, so, you know, um, dealing with all this pre-coat and all of this other stuff, ugh, it, I, I think it adds too much to the process where I just want, I want to build parts, prepare them, put them in my paint booth, get them out, put them together. I, I don't want to spend a whole weekend taking a part and cleaning it with a cloth and doing water tests and all sorts of stuff. It's honestly a waste of your time, it's a waste of my time. So I, we're not going to be doing that. So our process then, and we're going to be able to see what kind of paint this looks like as well. After we've done this budget, um, uh, this budget or faster process of getting the material ready, we can see what the surface finish is like. If I go ahead and just try, after, after the paint has um, dried on here, and I just rub my finger on it and the paint just peels off, well, obviously my process doesn't work. But if it sticks like, if it sticks to the material, then the process works. So, um, see what I mean? If it works, why would you change it? Why would you add these extra processes? And hey, you can. Uh, there's, nothing, th there's nothing wrong with pre-coat. Can it help? Probably. Um, how much is it going to help you? Well, probably the best thing is prevention. Don't let your airplane sit on a beach. Um, that might help. Uh, so if you don't let your airplane sit on a beach, uh, maybe that would be better than dealing with pre-coat and all of these other processes. So they're literally just adding time to your build. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, quickly show you how we're going to do this. Now, first things first, of course, we're going to remain safe. We're going to bring ourselves over some safety goggles here. And uh, we're going to also use ourselves some gloves. I've just got some nitrate gloves here. And what this is to do is um, to keep all of the acids and... Uh, stuff like that um, off, off the material. So as I am cleaning, um, I am also removing any of the oils or acids that I may have previously had on my hands. These are just heavy duty nitrite gloves. Um, there's nothing fancy about them. You'll get them from Home Depot or whatever, wherever your favorite place is to shop for stuff. Amazon, I don't know. Um, so just some black nitrate gloves. Um, so I'm not continually transferring oils and stuff like that to my material. So uh, let's go ahead and prepare it. Quite simply is I just want to remove the shine. We can see it's very, very shiny here. So I just grab my Scotch-Brite pad and uh, well, here you can see I've got a nice little bit of, um, this is actually just a floor mat that I got from uh, Canadian Tire for a few dollars. Um, and it's not the world's best because it kind of tears up my uh, Scotch-Brite pad. But um, go ahead and we just uh, surface prepare it here a little bit, making sure we get the edges as well. Obviously we, um, if this was a real part, we would have uh, deburred these edges already on our uh, 3M EXL deburring wheel. If you don't have one of those, oh my god, you need one. Um, they are amazing. And uh, yeah, so we're just trying to, what we're doing here is we're just trying to cut through that alclad layer, right? We have, um, we have a thin layer of um, pure aluminum uh, on top of our 2024 um, uh, alloy. And so we just want to cut down through that oxide layer here so our etching primer has something to stick to. Because remember, the job of etching primer is to stick to clear material. It's, de it's designed to stick to um, the, the material that we've got here. It has uh, uh, one of the paints here we have as limestone-based etching. Others are chemical-based. Um, uh, it, it, the, the paint is designed to stick to this. I don't need something to help the paint stick to it other than good preparation. I, I, you do not need it. Um, it might help with some corrosion prevention. The... Um, the, it would help with some corrosion prevention, that pre-coat stuff. But, uh, as previously discussed, don't leave your airplane on a beach and you'll be fine. So, uh, we can see the material's a little bit duller uh, compared to the other side. You can see this side, it's nice and dull. Uh, so, we'll go ahead and uh, just knock the paint off on this side as well. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you all of these. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just want to show you the process that was went through for all of these. You can see we really don't need to spend too much time uh, doing this. We really just want to knock those edges off um, and uh, just make it nice and nice and dull. We're not trying to remove material here. And these Scotch Bright pads, these brown ones, they they remove obviously some material, but it's microns it's removing. It's not to millimeters or fractions of a millimeter. Okay, great. 
So uh, there we go. We've got one one scotch brided part, right? Next step. What's next? Oh, I really cut a hole in my in my gloves. The next step in uh, my process here is to go ahead and just grab ourselves a nice clean shop rag. We'll go ahead and fold it up a few times. And the first thing I do is I want to get rid of all of the um, the dust um, that I've just made, either from the Scotch Brite pad or um, uh, the um, uh, aluminum dust that might still be on the surface here. So we'll go ahead and give it a wipe down. And you can see just this rag alone. You can tell the blue to the um, the color there. Uh, it, it's when you just wipe it down, even dry, it will go ahead and pick up a lot of garbage that's still on the surface. After we've done that, I take that piece of paper, I uh, save it, I keep it dry. I'll grab another piece here. A little foldy fold. Grab ourselves some acetone. So I've just poured out a little bit of acetone here in a little paint tray, um, a couple of dollars from a Dollarama store or whatever, um, and just get a little bit uh, on, on our um, sheet here. And we just go ahead and this acetone here will clean off any of the um, oils, acids, or anything like that. And uh, of course, we've got our safety goggles on uh, and our gloves here so we don't get it on ourselves. Um, you can go ahead and put on a, a chemical proof apron and stuff like that as well. or Because we're not dealing with any um, any real liquid, the, the liquid in is right ahead of me there. So I'm not really worried about it splashing on me. Um, you could wear a full face shield and I'm not leaning over the top of the thing inhaling all the fumes. Um, you know, if someone walks in on you and you're sitting there laughing at um, the sheet of aluminum, um, then uh, yeah, maybe you probably should remove yourself from the area and uh, make sure you're not breathing this stuff in. If you really want, you can wear breathing apparatus, just sit in a well-lit, uh, a well-ventilated room. That does not include having a heater on uh, blowing air at the fumes here. They are obviously flammable. And uh, so then, after we've cleaned this, with our rag, we can see that we've still taken off quite a bit of um, uh, dust and stuff that was still um, caught on our um, sheet here. Um, after that, this piece is ready for paint. We're done. That wasn't much of a process, was it? Well, we're not quite. Um, what, uh, like, a, like I threatened before, is we're going to leave a little bit of um, we're going to leave a little bit of uh, the bottom of each of these slides um, uh, completely clear of paint. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tape off just the bottom here, and uh, that's going to be our um, reference area. Tape it all off. So uh, then after we paint it, we'll peel, remove this tape. And uh, so then we're going to have a nice area up top here where we can get scratches and stuff like that in. And then we're going to have an area on the bottom where we can say, hey, without anything, what would have the material done? And uh, we're going to go ahead and copy paste that a few thousand times, or a few thousand times. Uh, and uh, here we go. Here's some I prepared earlier. So uh, these are all of the slides that we're um, going to use. They've all been uh, prepared the same way. Although this one here still has some tape on it. On there, still have a little bit of tape on it. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you can just see the, the area that has been scotch brighted there, it really, really stands out, right? Area that has been scotch brighted, and now it's clean. So, what I also um, would recommend is from now on when you're handling these materials, so uh, the next step for me is going, to, going into our little paint booth here, hanging them and spraying them, is Always now, now that I'm going to handle these, always throw on a pair of these nitrite gloves and you're never going to get any acids or oils on the thing. From now on, these should be clean and they should be kept clean. Have a nice, clean rag here if you're putting components on. Put them in, put it in there. Make sure there's no acids, oils or anything like that getting on it. Um, handle them uh, with nitrite gloves, even if you're just carrying it to another bench. Put nitrite gloves on, carry them, and then you're not going to transfer, you know, the hot wings that you just ate for lunch onto your nice aircraft part. Keep everything clean from now on. The acetone would have wiped everything off. And uh, now we have some slides ready for paint. It's as simple as that. Um, with simple, easy to access components and scotch bright. you know, these things cost like a dollar for, I bought a whole box of them for under $20. Um, and, uh, you know, these, don't skimp out on these, um, you know, when they, when they start looking like crap, I don't have any around me that are, oh yeah, I do, um, stand by, I'll grab one here, uh, that's a little bit overused, um, you know, when they start looking like 
this. This is way, way too overdone. I'll put them in the bin. Uh, <laughs> one, because you know, some of the material that you're removing is getting caught in the scotch bright. Um, don't skimp out, put it in the bin. Uh, this one here is still good to go for, for other pieces. Um, but uh, there we go. That's how we've prepared the slides and uh, that's how um, I will be preparing uh, the components for my aircraft. Very, very simple. scotch bright acetone. Um, it's a very, very simple process. Far simpler to do. Make sure you protect yourself. Gloves, eye protection, breathing protection if you're doing this in a small room. Um, and other than that, uh, well, we're going to see if it works, right? If I go ahead and spray this, you know, I'll eat my words and, uh, hey, we would have learned something that, hey, this preparation technique doesn't work. I don't know. You're going to have to find that out later in the video. I'll leave you with that and uh, let us progress on. Okay, so uh, let's show you how we're going to actually paint the stuff in here. There's nothing fancy about it. This is, uh, this is our paint booth. Um, maybe another video, I'll show you the paint booth. It's just made out of PVC, um, PVC pipe and some uh, sheeting. Uh, it's not super fancy PVC pipe, it's just the PVC pipe that you would use for um, like in-home uh, vacuums, you know, in the wall vacuums. That's the PVC pipe I've used here. It's a, it's a lot cheaper than regular PVC um, and it's strong enough and uh, I didn't need to cut anything. I just got the eight foot lengths. So I got an eight foot by eight foot by eight foot cube in here. And uh, I just made some really budget paint stands in there. Other video. But uh, so let's, let's have a look how I'm actually going to paint all these again. I'm not going to show you me painting every single one. That'll be very boring. Um, but we'll go ahead and show you the process. So the first process is we'll go into the booth um, and we will just take in the two sheets um, that we will be painting. So I've gone ahead and put a little bit of lock wire on top here. Um, so we'll walk in with each two sheets. I'm not leaving any of the other sheets in the paint booths so that I don't get any contamination. The other, the other sheets are on the other side of the hanger. Um, and so basically what we'll do is we'll go in, we'll hang two of these up, um, put on our mask and uh, spray both of these with, some, uh, with the paint. Make sure there's no runs. Um, and uh, then I'll go ahead and, and take these from, from what you see over here. Um, it, we'll, we'll take it, after we've sprayed it here, um, I'll go ahead and I've got a little rack just outside, um, and this is where the parts will all cure here. So they're gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead after it's painted, um, we'll go ahead and take our piece, um, we'll hang it on one of these, we'll mark it, and uh, then all of the pieces are gonna be uh, here on this little rack that I've made. So. Uh, there should be no cross contamination um, between um, uh, between paints, as there's only ever going to be um, the, the pieces that are getting shot with the individual um, paint uh, in the booth at any one time. So uh, that should keep uh, any cross contamination um, out of the out of the equation here, and uh, pretty simple. So uh, let's go ahead and just get prepped here. I'll show you the full process for this um, now. I know it's boring, but uh, hey, I don't know. It's uh, Someone out there might find it of use. So go ahead and just put the lock wire up there with a little bit of a turn. And uh, again, of course, we're shooting two sheets. So we'll go and hang our uh, second sheet up here. And both these sheets are just getting shot the same. Um, same coverage, same everything. Uh, and uh, the other thing that we're using to help, well, obviously, make sure your can is nice and freshly rattled. And this, the other thing to note here is this is going to be pretty typical of uh, people uh, building at home. I'm sure I've got a booth here. You can see it is still Canada. Um, it's probably around um, five, six degrees in the hangar um, Celsius. So whatever that is in freedom units. Um, but it's pretty cold on the inside here. So uh, it's not ideal conditions. It's not 30 degrees. It's not even above 15 degrees. So... Um, Everything not being perfect um, is, I think, a good. Uh, I, I think everything not being perfect is a is a good way here of um, actually testing. We're not all going to have laboratory conditions. We're not all going to have a, a proper paint booth, and even this thing isn't sealed up 100. percent It's the whole idea of this booth is just to keep the fumes out of the hangar or out of the garage. Um, it's not designed to be a clean room. Um, there's no way I'm going to be tracking dust in and out and all sorts of stuff like that. It's not designed to be a clean room. It's just designed to keep the fumes away from other people in the hangar. So, um, uh, yeah, I can't remember where I was going with that. 
No idea. Whatever. Um, so yeah, we. Uh, oh yeah, the temperatures and stuff like that. Um, so it, it's not ideal conditions. Absolutely not. Maybe we'll get better paint adhesion if the temperature was up, but I can't afford the heater bill, so uh, the temperature is cold. Um, so if this doesn't work in cold temperature, it's minus 20 outside and it's just above zero inside. So if it doesn't work here, well, we, we know why. The, the, the etch never got a chance to bond to the material. Ah, whatever. Um, but again, uh, I, would rather, I would rather see something that would happen in the real world, right? Everything that we're doing here is um, a real world scenario, not like if I have the world's best paint booth, the world's best painter, um, the world's best equipment is, I don't have that, I'm a kit builder, so I'm going to use pressure pack paint, um, and I'm going to use the things that I have lying around home. So uh, that's, that's the whole mentality of this. And, and this thing here, you know, it cost a, it cost a couple of hundred dollars. Um, what's a couple of hundred dollars when you're going to be painting or priming the entire airplane? It's not much, and it's completely um, demountable as well. You know, we can go ahead and pull the thing apart and move it if I ever needed to. Um, but it's another video. Let's go ahead and get uh, let's go ahead and get prepared here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, throw on uh, my uh, mask. Before I do, here's something I would recommend: is uh, I picked this up from uh, Home Depot. It's uh, a little spray can holder with a trigger. So it kind of um, means that uh, when you're spraying your pressure pack, uh, it comes out like a gun. You know, it's just this saves obviously having to have a, um, uh, a, 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 a large air compressor that can handle the flow and all that other stuff. We talked about that earlier, so we won't get into it too much. But uh, this, uh, this little handy, handy dandy little thing was like $10. Um, it's universal, it'll fit on everything, and it's going to save you a lot of um, ache on your hands. But the other thing is, is I don't know about you guys, but anytime I've ever used spray cans, I'll always, always be using my finger like that. And as I get more and more tired, I bring my finger over the top of the nozzle and end up getting drips off my index finger. And uh, those drips all splatter onto my job. So, um, I think someone's showing up at my hangar. I don't know. There's a car outside. We'll see what happens. So yeah, we'll um, get one of these. They're like 10 bucks. They're great. So just give the can a little bit of a shaky shake and uh, go ahead and stay safe. Get a, get a mask on. Okay, great. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close up the paint booth now. And uh, this thing here, quite simply, it just uh, has a little clampy clamp thing there. All right, let's shoot them. So I'm going to shoot with about uh, with about a I don't know six to ten inch um, gap uh, from can to the material, um, and that's all it's going to need. Yep, someone's here. Hang on a second, guys. Well, uh, yeah, you guys won't know, but uh, continuity. Uh, we got visited by a friend, so I got to hang out for a little while. Um, let's go ahead and shoot this paint here. So I've gone ahead and uh, reshaken up the can. Um, we'll go back in uh, again, making sure we put on our uh, gas mask, and uh, let's shoot this thing. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about other than uh, we will be um, shooting with about uh, 6 to 10 inches away from the can. Um, you'll just be able to watch, and uh, uh, we're going to do that ad infinum. Not ad infinum, but uh, for the rest of the cans, and uh, yeah, that'll be it. We'll show you how thick we put it on, and uh, yeah, go from there.
we have it. You see there, nothing too fancy, nothing really fancy about it. Spray it on. Um, it's not on too thick here, uh, especially with this yellow stuff. You don't need to put it on too thick. I'm not going to touch my computer. I've got yellow all over my hands. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see the, uh, uh, the level of paint here. As soon as my uh, camera wants to actually point at the thing. There we go. So we've got a nice uh, nice layer on there, fairly consistent. Uh, that one there's got a little bit of a run to it. The other thing I will be doing is looking at how the paint, uh, I'll kind of do a little bit of a review of each individual um, paint, how it actually comes out of the can. And well, this one here, it definitely is running. So uh, I didn't really put it on that thick and uh, we've got, well, yeah, the other piece here didn't run, it's just this one. So I probably tried putting it on a little bit thick on this second piece. But again, it's got a little bit of a run. You can't really see it. It's not like a really thick run. It's just the paint is, uh, it didn't quite directly stick onto the piece. But uh, there we go. We're gonna do this for all of the pieces and uh, after which I'll go ahead and make a little review or uh, um, point down uh, the actual, what I thought of how it actually painted, you know, what the surface is like as well. Because that's part of it, uh, uh, of these paints as well, right? If, uh, if it always is going to run, uh, like it has here, I put it on a little bit thick, is, you know, how easy is the paint to use? And, well, this, uh, I would say if you put it on thin like I was meant to, it worked well. If you put it on a little bit thick, looks like it's going to run. So uh, I'm going to go ahead here and do the rest of the um, uh, the rest of the uh, the pieces here, and uh, I might record little clips of um, post paint to show you sort of what it looks like. But no, actually, I'll do that after it's set. You know, we'll do that for all of them, and then I'll go ahead and make a little make a little number thing here of uh, how we're going to um, review the actual paint as to how it actually goes when it um, when it gets shot and how it actually uh, how how it comes out of the can. That'll be it. All right. I'm going to continue painting the rest of these. And uh, you guys, um, well, I'll show you the rest here uh, as a review.